Friends, it is good to gather together on this, uh, the eve of Thanksgiving. 2020 has been quite a year. I have no doubt I will remember uh, this year for a long time. We have uh, engaged in a lot of adapting and uh, changing, and uh, that has been hard. That has not come without uh, pain or without suffering, has it? But I'm also noticing how much I and uh, we, how much we have to be thankful for. I am thankful uh, for each of you. I am thankful for uh, my family and for, for your families. And uh, I am thankful that uh, I've had enough I mean, literally enough food and uh, water and shelter. I have enough. We gather together on uh, this day of Thanksgiving, and I uh, recognize how often the words of Scripture press us toward Thanksgiving and how often throughout the pages of Scripture that God's people are thankful. That's really what this uh, season is about, uh, this season, however, didn't start in the church. It's not a church uh, holiday, uh, but it is. It's deeply rooted in Christian tradition, isn't it? Uh, let's start today with, uh, with a proclamation. In the first year of the presidency of George Washington in 1789, a day of national thanksgiving was set aside for the last Thursday of November. Since that time, Americans have celebrated this day of remembrance of all blessings which God has poured down upon this nation and her citizens. In the Presidential Proclamation for Thanksgiving Day 19, or 1863, President Abraham Lincoln had this to say, it is the duty of nations as well as of citizens to owe their dependence upon the overruling power of God, to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon, and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations are blessed whose God is the Lord. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. 
We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace. Too proud to pray to the God that made us. It has seemed to me fit and proper that God should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Here ends the reading. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading for this day comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 4. Verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is any worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Thanksgiving reading comes from the 30th chapter of Jeremiah, 18 through 22. Thus says the Lord, I am going to restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob and have compassion on his dwellings. 
The city shall be rebuilt upon its mound, and the citadel set on its rightful site. Out of them shall come thanksgiving, and the sound of merrymakers. I will make them many, and they shall not be few. I will make them honored, and they shall not be disdained. Their children shall be as of old, their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all who oppress them. Their prince shall be one of their own, their ruler shall come from their midst. I will bring him near, and he shall approach me. For who would otherwise dare to approach me, says the Lord, and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Great words of God's covenant with people repeated throughout scripture and throughout various uh, people in the Bible here in Jeremiah. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Let's pray. God, on uh, this Thanksgiving uh, day, let us give thanks. Let us uh, recognize with grateful hearts your many provisions. In the midst of a suffering and challenge, you have uh, provided for our needs, food, shelter, water, love, work, and uh, some of us struggle and uh, find ourselves uh, without, without everything we need for life. We pray for those who are challenged on uh, this day and always. We pray that you'll provide us on uh, this uh, evening with uh, your word of truth and your word of hope. Let these words be your words, holy and pleasing to you. Let our ears be open to receive them and uh, let our hearts be changed. Amen and amen. This reading comes from uh, Jeremiah, the prophet, a uh, well-known uh, prophet in the Old Testament. This uh, time period is about 600 years or so before the time of Jesus, and the people are hurting. It's uh, maybe a year or so uh, before Jerusalem was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar and its people carried off into exile, into Babylon. Jeremiah's uh, book speaks of the ultimate restoration of Israel, both uh, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And uh, the word is that God still loves the people. You see, in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet is doing his job. He's bringing God's uh, word the people, and it was a hard word to hear. They were not trusting God, and uh, Jeremiah called their attention to that. But this uh, section of scripture is, is where things turn. We often call it the book of consolation. Truth be told, God still loves Israel. Both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, they were split or fractured earlier. God's intention is to bring the exiles back to their homes. That religious unity would be restored and uh, that this uh, same blessing would be bestowed on the southern kingdom. In uh, Jeremiah, we also hear this, uh, this messianic uh, promise of sorts. Israel and Judah will unite to serve Yahweh their God and David their king. This gathering of scattered Israel becomes a major theme uh, of the prophets. And even today, that is uh, the dream. I think it's even a dream we have, the dream of restoration, of unification. In a world uh, where there is uh, so much 
um, disunit, where there are so many breaks and splits. We have uh, seen it now on this side of uh, the election. We have seen it in a response to a pandemic. We have seen it uh, in our uh, relationships, especially uh, as we uh, see those visible postings on social uh, media. We, as people, are in need of unity. Clearly, if uh, unity was uh, possible or was easier, we would have uh, brought it about long ago. But this kind of unity that Jeremiah uh, speaks, this kind of unity that Jesus Christ himself uh, preaches, this unity comes from God and only from God. You see, uh, this time, 2020, this time, is a time of suffering. This time is a, is a time of challenge. I have reflected often uh, back on the Apostle Paul's words from uh, Romans. I boast in my sufferings because uh, suffering, I'm paraphrase, paraphrasing here, suffering does really important things. Suffering produces endurance, Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Finally, hope is the thing that doesn't disappoint. And you heard hope in the proclamation from Jeremiah, didn't you? In the words of the Lord, I am going to restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob and have compassion on his dwellings. The city shall be rebuilt upon its mound, and the citadel set on its rightful site. They have been taken from their home. Their homes have been destroyed. They're living in tents in a foreign land. God will restore them all the way back to their own land. Their uh, houses will be built on, uh, on the place where disaster has, uh, has happened, the mound of uh, the remains of their former city. And then we hear from the Lord, out of them shall come thanksgiving and the sound of merrymakers. This is joyous, my friends, and it's part of why we gather on Thanksgiving is to recognize God's blessings. I will make them many and they shall not be few. I will make them honored and they shall not be disdained. Thank you, God. Nothing warms our heart more than growth and support, respect and honor. This is certainly good news. Their children shall be as of old. Their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all who oppress them. And then God uh, makes a turn in these uh, words. Their prince shall be one of their own, not a governor appointed by the occupying forces that have uh, taken them hostage. Their prince shall be one of their own. Their ruler shall come from their midst. I will bring him near and he shall approach me for who would otherwise dare to approach me? The ruler that's called from their people will be close to God, connected to God at a time when when many won't approach God. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. My friends, uh, this is the word we need for today. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. This promise of God in this time of challenge and grief is powerful. It's strong, and it's hope-filled. Suffering does have an effect on us as much as we want to avoid it. Suffering makes us strong, tough, enduring. And the leaning into God's laws, the leaning into God's ways of being is, uh, is only amazing and 
faith-filled. This is a tough, tough year, my friends. There has been a death. There has been suffering and disaster. There has been job loss, financial pain, relational breaks. And all of those things can be so awful. But God is present. This God who promises, right here, 2,600 years ago, you shall be my people, and I will be your God. This season, then, is an important season for us. I think there is something in gratefulness and thankfulness that's really important if we're really to be faithful to God, to recognize the many ways God has uh, blessed us, and to recognize we are adaptable. We are able to adapt. We have never started, stopped being church during these 10 months of a pandemic. But church often looks different, including this, that uh, Thanksgiving is celebrated online. But God can uh, use that. I've seen it play out over and over in our practices. We're learning much about ourselves. We're being reminded of God's uh, commitment to us and God's desire for us to be committed to him. I think this time of suffering is also a time of grief and how important it is in uh, being thankful to, uh, to not diminish our grief. Dr. Teresa Latini uh, writes, finding time to be silent is one way to address this, to breathe and to listen to ourselves, even small segments of time, five minutes, twice each day can enhance our self-awareness and contribute to inner peace and clarity of mind. Noticing without judgment or blame our compulsion to fix it or bend the rules in order to soothe ourselves and others, such mindfulness might put us in touch with our heartbreak, worry, frustration, or fear, beautiful aspects of our humanity. Paying attention to our attempts to alter our feelings instead of resisting our inner life, we can ride our emotions like ocean waves, trusting that feelings come and feelings go. For mourning, uh, we receive our sorrow when and how it arrives on the scene. There's no prescription or right way to grieve. Requesting support, care, and guidance from a friend, a family member, a therapist, a mentor, or a pastor when our grief is complicated or depression looms. We can watch and wait for gratitude to bubble up within us. We can listen for it in the lives of others. We can choose gratitude daily. In fact, studies show that gratitude as a regular practice lowers stress, bolsters resilience, cultivates happiness, strengthens relational bonds, and thereby contributes to our well-being. It is what this holiday is all about, giving thanks, perhaps especially when our tears flow and chests heave in grief. What are you grateful for today? What are you grateful for today? Make sure you take some time uh, on uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow to, to ask that question of yourself, but to share that question with others. What are you thankful for today? This very question increases our hope and increases our joy and it buoys us up as we mourn. 
My friends, grace and gratitude are inseparable. Merely a taste of God's love inspires thankfulness. Grace and gratitude surprise us and move, move us to receive one another with delight. We may not be gathering this year as we have in the past. It may look different, but we are people who dwell together with Christ. We dwell in the midst of sorrow, challenge, brokenness, with a God who loves us, whose son died as a common criminal on the cross. Out of love, Jesus comes. Out of love, Jesus lives among us. Out of love, Jesus dies on that cross on Calvary. Out of love, Jesus is resurrected. Out of love, Jesus ascends to God's right hand and out of love we follow this Jesus trusting in the same hope living in the same love. What are you thankful for this year? Let us join together in the litany for thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. God blesses us with gifts of love, with food and clothing, home and family. God blesses us with daily work and all we need from day to day. God protects us in time of danger and guards us from every evil. 
God calls us into relationship with him and forms us into one holy people, the church of Jesus Christ in this place. Therefore, shall we offer thanks and praise to the Lord our God. O Lord our God, we will give thanks to you forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, uh, it's great to be together. I want to wish you and your families a really blessed Thanksgiving uh, time. Enjoy it, whether you're uh, meeting uh, face to face or whether you're uh, you're gathered from afar this uh, year, uh, thank you. Thank you for being a part of our uh, life together as, uh, as the church. Thank you for your, uh, for your friendships. Thank you for sharing your gifts and your leadership as we uh, continue to be church in the world. Thank you to all those who help with these uh, services. I'm uh, very thankful for Daniel Richter's uh, great service over these uh, months of pandemic. Um, our worship is fairly, our online worship is fairly professional, and uh, that is not on me. I'm so thankful uh, for his uh, presence here each week, so too for uh, Dr. Matt and for Joe. I'm thankful for uh, your partnerships and your commitment to the church and, uh, and to know uh, no matter what we've been able to, to navigate each and every week in faithful ways. So thank you. Uh, this church has uh, many who serve as ushers, who check people in, who take care of uh, pyramids and candles and the facilities, who are doing a lot of behind the uh, scenes work, uh, who are paying attention to uh, our uh, church finances and uh, everything else administratively that goes with being church. Thank you. We couldn't do any of it without all of you. This church has also been uh, instrumental in supporting various ministries in the world, uh, including some amazing uh, support of uh, three area food shelves uh, through a sharing of produce grown in our gardens and uh, financial contributions, uh, our partnership with Urban Ventures, with uh, Camp Onamia, and, uh, and with uh, our uh, partner church in Tanzania, uh, the good people of Ihami. We're so thankful for all of uh, all of you, um, please uh, know that you have uh, been a blessing to me and uh, to us. And, uh, and we'll pray that God will continue to walk with us in the days ahead as we pray for an end to the pandemic and uh, the continued uh, presence of Christ in our lives. Let us reflect this light in all of our relationships and endeavors. Amen. Receive this blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Go forth in peace, feed the poor, remember the sick, comfort the grieving, share the goodness, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.